Hello and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Leon Hatodiaski. I'm working at the Chair of Renewable and Sustainable Energy Systems at the Technical University of Munich. Um, the topic I want to present today is the energy system optimization with Precise. This is part of the project GeoKW. So at first I want to shortly introduce the project a bit. You can see how everything is connected there. Um, then I will talk about the energy system optimization itself, first the more general part, and then in detail which model we use and how this is set up. Um, after that, I will finally come to the precise part. So uh, I'll explain how we use precise here to couple um, the energy system optimization with a simulation software, and finally show some first results from a simple scenario we did for the testing. So let's start with the project introduction, Project GeoKW. Um, yeah, we here see the rough outline of the project. The aim of the project is to analyze the potential for heating and cooling with groundwater sources, um, especially groundwater heat pumps um, in the city of Munich. Um, for that, we have on the left, the energy system optimization framework URBS, which as the name says, tries to op optimize the energy system. And on the right, the groundwater flow simulations of P Flowtron, where we will analyze the groundwater flow and the groundwater temperature. These both are coupled with precise. Um, and as the problem is quite big, we have to use the SuperMOC to solve it for the whole Munich, um, or whole city of Munich. Um, but now I want to focus more on the left side of this um, scheme, on the whoops part with the coupling of precise. The general scheme of a scheme of a energy system optimization framework you can see here. Um, yeah, it's quite simple. We have uh, some different input parameters like the costs per generation unit. Um, we define a demand which has to be fulfilled by the generation units. We have some um, uh, variable time series for the renewable energies. And then we get as a result the costs and the cost of an expansion and dispatch for this um, energy system. So we know which unit has to produce at what time step of the model and how much it has to produce and how much it costs us. Or you can also do a CO2 optimization. This is um, kind of the same. Everything is linear in the optimization framework to keep the model solvable. And all these parameters are defined per region. So we can have multiple regions. These are just some nodes. They don't have any um, geographical uh, reference. It's just how we define it. And they can be connected with these trans transmission lines we can see on the top left, um, but they don't have to be. So this is one part which might be very interesting in the later um, talk. Um, so keep this in mind. Maybe to um, also show a little bit more how these, how, how each region really works. We can have a look at this reference energy system. We can see here the different processes and commodities we defined in the model. Um, yeah, you don't have to have a detailed look, just to maybe on the right and to make it a bit clear how we model each process. So we have some input to a process and then define some output. It's all linear, but to have a more realistic modeling, we also do some yeah, more detailed um, uh, process, processes with several processes. One process is modeled with several processes, as you can see here for the example, and all the other processes on the left are modeled kind of in a similar way. Um, let's go on with the model for Munich. We see here now the, on the right the map of Munich again with a um, with heat demand per building. So each dot is one building, and depending on the color, it has a higher or lower heat demand. This heat demand is uh, generated synthetically. Um, because we don't have the actual data, but with some tools we have here at the chair, we can generate it 
in a synthetic manner, so it would still be um, close to the real values. We now also can do this for the cooling demand. So we have both this per building. Um, we define then for the model the costs and CO2 emissions for the different heating technologies. So the groundwater heat pumps get some costs, gas heater, um, oil heater, and so on. Um, to make sure that the problem, the linear problem, or the regions of the model in this linear problem are still independent and decoupled, we only model the district heating network as a price. So each region can buy some heat from district heating, but we don't model as a real grid to keep it decoupled. And then, especially in this project, we um, put also the current and possible heat pumps in Munich. So all we have kind of all of the possible locations and each of the heat pump is allocated to one region and or to one region can have more than one heat pump, um, but each heat pump has one region. And then we change the temperature um, or the efficiency with the input temperature from P Flotron, which we get from Precise. And that's how we couple the model and how we want to optimize the usage of these groundwater heat pumps. But with this coupling, we have two problems, um, or several problems, but two big problems this between optimization and simulation that we have some general differences. So in the optimization, we have um, the entire horizon or time horizon as one, and we already know the whole horizon. We have to define everything for the whole time horizon. And we um, need to, or we need the whole time horizon to find an optimal result. In a simulation, we normally have only one time step, which we simulate and then do a stepwise iteration and go on until the nth time step. So this is the first big difference, the temporal resolution. The second was about the spatial resolution. As I mentioned before, we define in our energy system framework the information per node, but the node has no actual geographical information. We just name it a certain way, and that's how we define the node. In the simulation, especially in the ground for simulation now, we have some coordinates. So each node has a certain point. The question is also how to connect this um, resolution and, or the spatial resolution. That we know which point on the um, groundwater simulation is which node in the um, energy system optimization. And here, um, precise comes in play. And we um, used two already implemented um, tool or yeah already implemented um, features of Precise to solve these problems. So let's start with the solution for the temporal problem, or let's call it also the communication scheme. Um, you can see here the rough layout of how our algorithm works. So we always have to run URPS and pflotron completely and then exchange information. And when we solved or converged with these iterations, we have to update our problems a bit and then do the iterations again. So normally with the implicit coupling, the information between the coupled simulations is exchanged multiple times within one time window, which is equal to one time step in the solver and it's moved on to the next time window with the region convergence. But in our case, pflotron and ROPS have to run for their entire time horizon, so as explained on the slide before and just mentioned, and not just one time step. So in one time window, we run the iteration over ROPS and pflotron, which you can see in the right now, until it converges. After the completion, we know which of the existing heat pumps is used and with the out iteration we can now adjust the list of heat pumps by for example adding another heat pump. So in short we use the iteration of one time window to achieve convergence of the coupling data across the entire simulation time and then all the time windows, the iteration of all the time windows 
to optimize the infrastructure model in OPS. And by this, the optimization and simulation are coupled and precise solves the temporal resolution problem. But the problem with the spatial resolution exists, so let's continue with that one. Um, the solution for it was to adapt the data mapping. In our case, we used the nearest neighbor mapping, and because we run both simulations for the entire time horizon, we have to perform the data mapping not only over space, but also over time, as again shown in the slides before, so that in each inner iteration, um, in one time window, the optimization knows for which time step the simulation calculate which value. So instead of geographical coordinates, we had to define the different coordinates, and we used here the heat pump ID as the X coordinate and the, the time step of each pre-flow joint and oops, as the Y coordinate. So we kind of created new vertices with the same heat pump ID, but different point in time. So this you can see on the tables on the left and right. So in Pflotron and OOPS, we have for both a list of all heat pump IDs available on each rank. Heat pump ID 10 can be on one rank and heat pump ID 30 can be on another rank inside Pflotron and similar inside OOPS. But all the heat pump all the heat, ID, heat pump IDs 10 with the time steps are on one rank, of course. And now in the adapter, we ensure that heat pump 10 with time step 1 is the first entry for the um, boundary conditions, and heat pump 10 with time step 2, the second one, and so on. So by this, we now know that the coupling data for each heat pump at every point in our simulation and optimization time horizon, and we can Hence, apply the correct constraints in OOPS. So we connected the um, temporal and spatial resolution together with this data mapping. And by this, we solved the data mapping problem and the spatial resolution problem, and can now finally run the optimization of the groundwater flow with our energy system model. So let's have a look at our example or first test scenario, um, just shortly the setup, what we defined here. So we had an example area in, in the city of Munich with 20 buildings, um, it had interesting groundwater um, textures, so that's why we choose it there. We used the synthetic demand load prof profiles per building. Um, the buildings with possible heat pump locations had the possibility to use a heat pump. Um, we knew the or we defined the mass flow rates for all the 15 possible heat pumps and we also defined the fixed temperature difference between the injection and extraction well 5 kelvin or 5 um, degrees celsius and then we additionally added the constraint for the injection temperature that has to be higher than 4.5 degrees and lower than 20 degrees so these are the um, general restrictions for the usage of a groundwater heat pump um, yeah, on the right, you can see the mesh for this problem and the overview of the problem size for the map. Um, we then ran first the thermal calibration, so the initial p flotron simulation for all of the heat pumps. Um, you can see the results of the thermal calibration here. On the left, there is the um, yeah, result of the five days. And then on the right, the final result of the whole time horizon. Um, yeah, you can see all the 15 heat pumps, and there are still really low values. So it goes down to 1.3 um, degrees Celsius, which shouldn't be the case. But so far, we did not apply or did not use the optimization. So the, there are no constraints yet. That's then the next step. So with our Simple optimization results here. Um, we, um, after thermal calibration, ran the iteration for the optimization. And then we see some changes, of course. On the left, um, we see that there are only 12 heat pumps left instead of the 15 which were there initially. So the optimization kind of shuts down three heat pumps. And we also see on the scale 
that the lowest value is now 4.5 degrees Celsius, and we are not as low as in the thermal calibration anymore, so the constraints are um, bounding, and we get an optimal result. And the circles you see on the left, you um, see that the heat pumps are missing. After that, we run a second optimization, so this is then cost structure 2, because we wanted to see if the optimization changes, if we change the cost structure, so we change the costs for the heat pumps, which were shut down in the um, example on the left, and set them to zero, so they are now really cheap and um, really um, easy to use for the optimization. So you can see the result of this um, run on the right. There's again some changes, some heat pumps disappear, and an additional heat pump which was shut down before appears now. Still the constraints are bounding, or the uh, solution is inside of the constraints, and we have an optimal solution. Um, yeah, so we see that the optimization is working, and with this I would conclude my presentation with a short summary. So yeah, I sh showed that or showed the coupled approach with the simulation and optimization. Um, the optimization scenario, the simple one, showed the expected results as we thought they should be. And the precise, the already existing precise features for the mapping and the communication helped us solving our problems. And yet the next steps in our project would now be to um, improve the algorithm and to run it on the SuperMOOC or to use the whole cap cap um, capacity of the SuperMOOC to solve then some larger optimization problems for, yeah, up to the whole city of Munich. Um, then thank you all for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions.